This is Neil with NC Software. We're taking a look at the iPhone simulator and we're going to go over data entry with Love Pro version 2 for iPhone and iPad. We'll just start at the top down the uh, with, with the certificates and go down to flights. Um, this is the home screen of the application. So we're going to go into the certificates area. If you have certificates entered already, you'll see them listed here. You can select one and, and edit and I'll show you that in just a little bit. So let's add our first certificate by tapping the plus button on the bottom right. Let's go ahead and uh, enter the, the grade, and I'm just going to call this Certificate 1. And we'll just give it a number for the uh, uh, purpose of this demonstration. We can uh, hide a keyboard, as you can see, by uh, tapping the down arrow. This only applies to iOS 4. For iOS 3 devices, you will see a Done button anytime you're in a numeric field, such as the number of landings, etc. In this case, these are both text fields, and uh, but we're using an iOS 4 device, so we can tap the Down arrow to dismiss the keyboard. Now, anytime we have a Date field, we can tap the center. I'm just tapping the, the center of the row, and this will give us a Date Picker, so we can go back. Um, you can see that I can tap a date or I can scroll and end up, I can see the 12, so I'll just tap the 12 and it will automatically select that date. Or we can tap today and it will set the date for us. Now if we tap save on the bot top right of any screen, that information will be saved. If we tap the top left button, uh, consider it like a cancel button, we'll go back without saving. So let's tap save. December 22nd will be the value and uh, as you can see that value appears. Again in a date and time field um, we can choose today or if you see this blue button on the right hand side you can just tap that little clock symbol and that means enter the current date. If it's a date and time field such as a takeoff or landing time it will enter the current date and time. So let's go ahead and tap it and you can see the date changed to today's date of December 24th. We can enter any remarks. Oops. Again, if I click the top, if I tap the top left button, it will not save this information. That is a cancel uh, command. Anytime you want to save or commit your uh, entry or edit, you must tap save. So we tap save. And you can see that we've got a, a, a brief portion of the, um, the remarks displaying. To show you that there is remarks, you can tap it to view. Now, we're not making any changes, so I can just tap back to go back to the prior screen. So that's a very basic uh, certificate entry. On the bottom of the uh, entry forms are uh, two checkboxes. One is called Bypass Calendar, as you see. Now remember with calendar integration enabled on the device, anytime we add an entry, it's going to also place that item on your device's calendar. Now if you're making an entry that you do not want to have go on the calendar, assuming you do have calendar integration enabled, then you can just tap this row and check bypass calendar. Now when you have bypass calendar checked, just as you assume, it is going to not add this certificate to your device calendar. So you can add entry, you can have calendar integration enabled, so if you want your flights, etc., to be on your calendar, if there's any time you don't want something to go on the calendar, you can just check Bypass Calendar. Or you can go to the Settings Calendar area and turn off calendar integration. The next check box at the bottom is Synchronized. Now if I save this entry, you're going to see it's in and it's it's in black. Black means it has not been sent to the MySync portal. It has not been synchronized. All right. Now, if I return to the home screen and sync, it turns gray to indicate to you that it has been synced. Now, anytime we go in to view an item, it assumes you're doing an edit. So, if I was to save it, it again makes it black. It will synchronize again. It will not duplicate on the MySync portal. So 
as I have just demonstrated, I synced it, and then I went back and saved it again. It will sync again, but the MySync portal is smart. It knows this item. Um, it has a unique ID, and it says, all right, I'm going to delete this one and replace it with the updated one. On the bottom, we just talked about bypass calendar. Let's say we're going to make a save. Let's say we're going to add something new. For example, I already have my certificates and ratings in my in my logbook in Logbook Pro PC edition, but I want them to be on the device. But I don't want them to sync to the MySync portal because if I do so, they're going to get duplicated when Logbook Pro PC syncs from the MySync portal. It's going to take that information and add it to uh, your PC edition. It's not smart enough to say, "Hey, I've already got certificate one." It may think that like class one medical from five years ago, and now you're doing class one medical today. It's not going to assume they're the same. It's going to add it as a new item. So let's say you want to have your certificates and ratings and medicals on your device. You've already got them in your PC. You do not want this to be synchronized. You do not want to send it to the cloud, your MySync portal. So when you create your item, just check synchronized and then tap save and you are fooling the device. You are telling the device, this item's already synchronized. Don't look at me when you go to collect information to send to the MySync portal. So that's what uh, that does. Now, see how I just went into edit? It's going to assume that your edit needs to be saved and synchronized. So anytime you come in to uh, adjust the item, if you do not want your edit or, or new item to go to the, the portal, just check, check synchronized. Let's add one more item. And you can see we have the synchronized certificate one, the unsynchronized certificate two. Now we can delete items just like any other application on an iPhone or iPad by tapping the edit button at the top right. And then we can tap the minus symbol and then delete. The other way to do it is swipe. So just take your finger and swipe left or right and that delete button will appear. Tap delete to um, delete that item. That item will also be removed from your calendar if it has not been synchronized. So in this case, if I delete certificate one, it is not going to be removed from my calendar because it has already been synchronized. Now if I delete item or certificate two, it will be removed from the calendar because it has not been synchronized. Now you can fool the system. You can come in here and go um, view the item, save the item. It's going to think it's not synchronized, then delete it. It will be removed from the calendar. Hope you followed that. Um, just some advanced uh, uh, tricks. All right, let's take a look at the bottom of the data screen. So you have your two items. On the bottom right, just like we started out, this is to add a new item. And then we have a filter system here. We are showing all data, both synchronized and non-synchronized. If you want to filter your data to only see items that have not been synchronized, you can tap this filter. Or if you want to filter and view all of your synchronized items. So if you want to keep data on your device and only see your new information that has not yet been synced, you can use the filter bar at the bottom. Once data has been synchronized, it essentially has no purpose on the device. Mainly we're talking about um, uh, flights because that information goes to your PC edition which updates the reports. The final item on the bottom left of your data screen is a little trash can or formerly it was called purge. Um, well, we can tap that and that brings up a deletion dialog. Now we can delete all data or we can delete just the sync data. So maybe we've entered some information and we, we've synced it. We don't need it anymore. Um, I've also made a few new entries. I can delete only the synced. So I'm going to tap delete synced and we're going to see certificate one disappear, but not certificate two. Remember the gray items are synced, black are not synced. So there we have deleted our one certificate. And you can see on the right hand side of the home screen we will get a total number uh, of items in our data area. So we have one, whether it's synced or not, we have one item. All right, so that's a general uh, overview of uh, data entry. The ratings are the same. We'll hide the calendar or the keyboard. And we have the bypass calendar and synchronize buttons. We can click cancel to cancel out of our uh, addition. Let's take a look at the history section. So let's go into history. Let's add a new history. 
a little bit different here. So let's choose from the list which medical, uh, which event we are recording. History, by the way, is recording any item that has an expiration date. Could be a check ride, could be a medical, could be um, flight review, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Anything that has an expiration date goes in the history area of your logbook. So we're going to choose an accomplished date. Remember, I can tap the little clock symbol for today. And immediately the expiration date, the date due, is um, entered for you. Now we do have a calculator button. Anytime there's a calculator button on the right hand side, it's an action button. Let's say we change from class 3 to class 1. I chose the wrong medical. Now this expiration is based off of class 3. All right, We've got two years, end of month. Well, I changed to class 1. I need this expiration to recalculate the date due. All I do is tap the calculator button and the new date due will appear. And you can see that uh, in this case we have a green expiration. That means it's in the future. For a medical that has already expired, that value will be red. Let's take a look at, let's take a look at flight, uh, the flights area and adding new flights. A little more complex because we have uh, a lot more fields. Well, let's go over the general um, user interface. If you have multiple aircraft, you can choose which aircraft. Just tap the value and it will automatically save. We can uh, enter the uh, ident. We can tap next and that will place us in the next field. Now the route is a bit interesting because there's a new feature where if you double space it will convert that space to a hyphen. Otherwise you have to change the keyboard and find the hyphen. So we've got a shortcut around that. So let's type in K-R-I-C space space K-D-F-W space space K-L-A-X space space. Alright, so you get the see how it's working. I'm not having to change the keyboard to get the hyphen. So we'll just leave that in as, as, as for now. Usually I like to make them in uppercase as well. Now the number of legs. The legs is the same, another term for flights. With Logbook Pro, we use a free-form root entry. You do not have to mess with picking airfields, etc. No airport database required. Just enter it if you want to say local, um, whatever you want to use uh, for the uh, flight. So in this case, we've actually got two flights in here. We went from Richmond to Dallas, Dallas to LAX. So we want to enter two legs. Now, anytime you see the plus or minus, this is for our numeric or integer field or a counter field, you can use the plus minus to change the value or you can tap into the field and uh, change the value as needed. So let's go ahead and bring that down because we have two legs, leg one, leg two. Number of landings, we have one day, one night. And then UI times, out, off, on, in, also called out, take off, land, in, etc. You can uh, just tap the uh, the field and it will default to the flight date plus the current time and they will auto increment so the default is 15 minutes from out to takeoff which you can adjust in the settings flight log area you can change the increments between the time fields but just for the purpose of this demo um, well let's go in and look at the date time picker it's a little different than what I showed you earlier here we have date and time now if you want to use a 24 hour clock you can look, we have a knowledge base article. Essentially it says that it's controlled by your device. So you have to go to your device's settings and you can change the clock to a 24 hour clock. It is not application specific. All right, this little bar up here allows us to change the presentation. We can go to date and time. You can use the date only or time only. So you have different views for picking uh, the information. If you want to clear the value, you can tap clear and it removes it. All right. Um, or if you want to use the current, the exact date time for now, you can tap now. And then we tap save to save the value. All right. If I don't tap save, like I said earlier, the top left is a cancel button. All right. 140. Let's see if it changes to 140. Nope. See how it canceled. It did not save that value. Okay. Let's take a look at now that we have duration, now that we have out, take off, land, and end times. 
If you have an out in or a take off to land, we can auto calculate the duration. And we'll look at the settings later where um, you can set whether you're calculating between out and in or take off to land. All you have to do is tap the flight time button. I'm sorry, the, the calculator button on the right side of the duration field. And it will calculate your duration for you. Tap the X and it will go away. And uh, it will clear. The other feature we have here is these little copy duration buttons. So maybe I flew an hour. Well, let's go ahead and change this. We, we flew across the, uh, um, we'll go with five, six for the flight time. We can tap this button. It will enter the duration for us. All right, you see how this works. So we just tap these buttons. Now the video on the simulator doesn't always refresh very good. So uh, you might see some artifacts from the screen not appear properly. So just by tapping these buttons, we can copy in times as needed. Now let's take a look at our approaches. We can log multiple values of various approaches with a particular uh, flight entry and just tap back. In this case, it will automatically save. There's, if there's no save button, it's going to record it and it will show the total number of approaches. So it will give you an indication that you do have approaches logged for this flight. If you have a cost uh, for the flight, you can you can add it. You have remarks. You can add it, and uh, and the same two checkboxes at the bottom: bypass calendar and synchronized. But wait, there is a third checkbox. What is this pending flight? Pending flight is just as it sounds. You haven't actually completed this flight yet. You may have just taken off, or you may have imported. Uh, flights from the airline schedule importer. They are future flights. They're for next month. So let's go ahead and check. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's make this flight in the future. Let's see here. And uh, of course, our UI times are a little off, but for the for the just for the demo here, I'm just showing you that we are flying in the future. And let's save it. So let's take a look at the color coding. Red means pending flight. So if I come back, I'll change it to today's flight, and do not check pending, it'll be black. Just as I talked about earlier, black means not synchronized. Synchronized, it will turn gray. Pending, it will be red. It is flagging to you that this flight is not yet flown. It needs to be updated. The second row down is your route, route of flight. So we have Richmond, Dallas, Los Angeles. And then we have one day, one in, one day landing, one night landing. So that might help you airline pilots determine pilot not flying, pilot flying, etc. And then if we have out and in, you'll see the times. If not out and in, it'll be take off to land. And if you don't have any UI times, it'll be blank. And then your remarks. Other than that, it's the uh, same as the other data areas. You have your filter and your uh, purge button. You can purge within a data area. On the top right of the home screen is also a purge button, which applies to all data areas. So we can, again, either delete all data or synced data, but this applies to all data areas. So that's the general overview of the data entry. We looked at certificates and uh, ratings and history. We looked at all the data entry items. We looked at the date filter. I'm sorry, the date editor. Uh, we can pick just dates, uh, the date time uh, with the different presentations, bypass calendar, the synchronized and uh, how to dismiss the calendar or the keyboard with this little down arrow if you use an iOS 4 device. And uh, pretty straightforward. You'll learn as you go. And of course, you can always look at the documentation at logbookpro.com forward slash docs forward slash iPhone. Thanks for watching.